hard. To make a longbow, a craftsman cut six strips of cherry wood, a little more than half a centimetre thick, using a bandsaw. Then, with a belt sander, he repeatedly thins the wood strips on both sides, tapering the ends a little each time. With his bandsaw, he now carves a handle from a piece of wood. He brushes super adhesive glue onto fiberglass strips and the tapered strips of cherry wood. The work must be done swiftly because the glue will start to dry in less than an hour. Now the strips are layered. The fiberglass strips buttress the six glued wood strips on either end. This process is called lamination. Next, the wooden handle is glued to the fiberglass and wood lamination and topped with a piece of masking tape to protect it from scratches and glue smudges. Now the laminates are placed on a curved plywood shape called a bow form. A steel heat strip, a rubber hose and another plywood form are placed on top of the laminates. They are all clamped together. Then the rubber hose is inflated with compressed air. The pressure from the hose combined with the heat from the metal strip moulds the wood to the bow shape as the glue sets. One hour later, the laminates are removed, pressed and glued into more bow-like curves. Now, the bow form is drawn onto the newly curved lamination following a template made of fiberglass. With a bandsaw, the wood is cut along the lines which have just been drawn. The craftsman cuts an arrow shelf, the notch for the arrow to rest, as the archer aims. Then he trims the handle, making it a little wider at the centre for comfort. Next, using a file, he hollows out small grooves in the upper and lower limbs of the bow. These are called string knocks and the string will loop around them. To strengthen the tips, small pieces of fiberglass and moose horn are glued over them and the freshly filled knocks. They're clamped in a vice-like grip to set. When dry, the horn and fiberglass are filed to bring back the knock groove, then sanded. Now another piece of wood is glued over the handle to improve the look and feel of it. It's clamped together while the glue dries, and three hours later, it too is sanded. Next, the handle is wrapped in a piece of leather and stitched together with nylon thread called artificial sinew. Many years ago, they used the tendons of animals for thread. The leather will make the bow easier to grip. With a gel pen, the craftsman writes a serial number on the back of the bow, along with the draw weight. This bow will hold about 20 kilograms of pressure in check when it's drawn. This is a Flemish string jig, a wooden fixture with posts on it. Nylon string is looped around the posts. This is how the string is measured. It's always four inches shorter than the bow. It's cut using a utility knife. Wax is rolled onto it to make it easier to work with. The string is measured. Then, 16 strands of nylon, 8 black and 8 white, are twisted into a braid with loops on the ends. The string is hooked onto the knocks and it's time for target practice. As the bow bends, energy is stored. When it's released, the energy propels the arrow.